Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to break down multiple different catalysts as to why cryptocurrencies might be on the verge of exploding. First, we're going to talk about the hedge fund catalyst. I know we don't like talking about hedge funds on this channel, but in this case, we're gonna use their data against them. Then we're gonna talk about some trends happening in Ethereum, especially regarding NFTs. And then we'll talk about the Bitcoin futures ETF and a huge announcement that just came out by the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Folks, let's get right into this right after I mentioned that you should get up to $250 totally for free by going to BlockFi, metkevin.com slash BF, Use that link and you can get up to $250 by transferring your cryptocurrency over to BlockFi to earn yields on your cryptocurrency. It's like a cryptocurrency savings account. Go check it out, metkevin.com slash BF. They also have a credit card that will pay you in cryptocurrency rewards. Okay, folks, first, crypto hedgies. First of all, Median performance for discretion, discretionary loan crypto funds in 2020 was 294%, which is huge. And this is going to lead to a lot of enthusiasm for crypto related assets in hedge funds and traditional funds in the future. But there's some issues in the way, which we're gonna cover in a moment because those issues are starting to evaporate. Some of the research though that I was looking at, thanks to a report by PwC, was pretty fascinating. It indicated that the most common currencies traded by hedge funds were the following. Bitcoin at 92%, Ethereum at only 67%. I was surprised by that. I was expecting Ethereum to be like in the 80 plus percent range. Litecoin came in as the third most traded coin by Hedgies at 34%. Uh, then you have 30% Chainlink, 28% Polkadot, and 27% uh, Aave. What's crazy here is Cardano is missing. I was shocked by this. But anyway, 85% of crypto hedge funds intend to, quote, deploy more capital by the end of 2021. Well, that's bullish. And only about one fifth of normal hedge funds in the United States right now actually invest in digital assets. Of the ones that do, their average allocation is only 3%. That's a huge, huge potential for growth. And in my opinion, very, very bullish for crypto. The biggest barrier though, in this survey by PwC for hedge funds to get into cryptocurrencies more broadly than 3%, because 3% is kind of just like, I'm touching it to say I'm in it, but I'm not really in it, right? My portfolio allocation is almost 10%, which is like three and a half X that, which is great. But anyway, uh, the biggest barrier we're seeing right now is that 82% of survey responders, that is hedge funds who responded, are worried about regulatory uncertainty. This is why so many people think that some level of positive cryptocurrency regulation or just cryptocurrency regulation in general is actually going to be extremely bullish for crypto. And I couldn't agree more. Remember, it's Gary Gensler who says, the automobile became popular once we started having traffic lights and seat belts. <laughs> Most importantly, traffic lights and stop signs. <laughs> seat belts came a little later. Uh, but anyway, 77% of survey respondents said that client reaction and reputation was actually holding them back from investing more in cryptocurrency. 68% lamented that they don't have enough knowledge in cryptocurrencies to feel uh, savvy enough to invest. That's insane. That, think about that for a moment. That means almost four out of five are too worried about their clients' reactions and their reputations to invest in cryptocurrencies. And, and one third, I'm sorry, two thirds of hedge fund managers feel like they lack the knowledge to actually invest in cryptocurrencies. Now, personally, I think there are a lot of folks who think they know a lot more about cryptocurrencies than they actually do. And I like to be what I call consciously incompetent. That is a way of saying, I know that I don't know everything regarding crypto and I work every day to learn more. <laughs> I think that's really, really, really important because crypto is actually really cool. There is an endless amount of knowledge to be had. It's, it's awesome. But anyway, the biggest investors in these hedge funds are actually high net worth individuals and you're not really yet seeing asset managers or wealth management funds get into cryptocurrencies yet. Although Ross Gerber at Gerber Kawasaki does. So all of this together, in my opinion, is really bullish. You start getting asset managers in, bullish. Wealth managers in, bullish. The fact that two thirds of fund managers don't feel like they have enough knowledge to get into cryptocurrencies, uh, uh, that's bullish. <laughs> Think, imagine if they all actually thought 
thought they did, there'd be a lot more money in cryptocurrency. 77% worried about their clients. Ugh, how could you invest in those digital currencies? You know, like, think about that. The fussiness. Think about the people who are wealthy today and how they probably don't want their ad, uh, uh, their money allocated to cryptocurrencies because they're worried or they're confused or uh, this is foreign, <laughs> you know? Uh, so that, in my opinion, very, very, very bullish. The more we get funds involved in crypto, the better. We already know that 70% of institution or 70% of trading is done by institutions. But now we got to get to where we're seeing a big flip in the amount of money invested by institutions. We got to get up from that 3% threshold. It's pretty freaking low right now, which is a bullish sign for prices today. Now let's look at some technicals. If we look at Ethereum right now, we know we're knocking on the door of this psychological 4,000 threshold. We've bounced off this many times. This is the weekly chart. My top line is a weekly chart. This line right here at about 3750, which we're actually sitting on right now, bouncing off and off of when we look at the day chart is around that 3750 number. We keep bouncing off that figure again on the day charts, but this is the weekly chart right now. And what's really neat is if we zoom out a little bit, we can actually see a very nice wedge pattern beginning right here. And it's possible that we're going to break this trend here on the weak pattern once we at the same time break 4K. And it's possible that Ethereum is just going to explode up to the moon after that, which will be super exciting, uh, especially since Ethereum right now represents about 45% of my portfolio in full transparency. But that 4,000 level combined with this wedge, ooh, juicy, juicy, Juicy. Now, obviously, if you watched my Shiba Inu video about my complaints regarding the NFT drop for Shiba Inu, we know that Ethereum gas fees are still very frustrating. But the cool thing about Ethereum, and this is why I haven't lost faith in Ethereum, is that we have a whole crap load of new DeFi apps and stable coins that are constantly grabbing for network capacity. And that's why we see so such high gas fees sometimes, so much network congestion. It doesn't make sense to try to pay for a bag of chips with Ethereum right now because you're gonna get destroyed in gas fees. Now, some things have started to help with this and even though they haven't helped as much as they, you know, things will help in the future, it's nice to know that Ethereum is improvable, right? <laughs> we know this, like EIP 1559 helped. It helped by enabling people to bid on gas fees. And again, this is useful because NFTs are exploding and you wanna be able to adjust how much you're willing to pay, especially in urgent times. Whereas when you have a transaction that's not as urgent, you wanna be able to pay less. Now remember, all these gas fees also help make Ethereum deflationary. We're still not deflationary, it just helps get us in that direction. We're still minting more. But anyway, uh, what's awesome, what's awesome, awesome, awesome for Ethereum, and in my opinion, it's gonna be a huge catalyst in the future, is moving to that proof of stake model. Going through that hard fork, in my opinion, it's going to be very, very big. It's going to help get us a lot more mainstream, and it's gonna make Ethereum a pretty big competitor, which it already obviously is. I mean, it's much larger than. But to Cardano, which is one of the big ones already at proof of stake. And that's of course in addition to others that are already there as well. But Ethereum, <laughs> big potential here. Once in my opinion, we get to proof of stake and we start getting those gas fees really uh, more regulated. Maybe I shouldn't say regulated, but down as we get more supporting capacity. But anyway, uh, Ethereum hash rates for what it's worth are back at record highs after uh, we had the Chinese shutdown of miners. And this is good. This is uh, basically saying that we're seeing miners back to work uh, as opposed to being shut down as they've relocated out of China. Elon Musk, uh, it is also being reported that uh, Elon Musk might be coming back to cryptocurrency in terms of his Bitcoin holdings, which should be pretty bullish for Bitcoin. Uh, and that is because Elon Musk in the summer when he was an interview with, in an interview with Jack Dorsey and uh, Kathy Wood, which I covered on the channel, covered the entire interview and then summarized it afterwards. You could find that on my channel. But anyway, uh, in that interview, he alluded to being willing to go back to accepting Bitcoin as a method of payment for Teslas, especially since now we're probably a lot cleaner than all that dirty coal we were burning in China for Bitcoin, but that might still remain to be determined. We do know that uh, Tesla holds a, probably a, at this point a couple billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. And uh, Elon Musk has alluded uh, to the fact that SpaceX might already be in crypto as well. Both of these, when they come out, should be pretty bullish. Uh, for Bitcoin, which obviously something that's bullish for, for Bitcoin can tend to be very bullish for Ethereum as well. 
Uh, also worth noting that CoinGecko reports that the DeFi market is just 5% of the crypto market, that's it. The entire crypto market, DeFi is just 5% of it. DeFi does make up about 30% of the Ethereum market though. Uh, and a lot, a lot of, uh, I think, enthusiasm will come to uh, DeFi personally, this is just my opinion, once we get, DeFi a little bit more user-friendly, that Shiba Inu drop wasn't very really good, okay? But anyway, uh, let's now talk about the Bitcoin e ETF briefly here. Uh, big news on, first of all, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is a way to buy Bitcoin for institutional investors who can't directly hold cryptocurrency, so they invest in this fund, essentially, that holds cryptocurrency. Uh, and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust announced this morning that they want to convert their entire trust into an ETF. That's bullish. That's very, very bullish. That is big. We are waiting for a legitimate Bitcoin ETF to come and a lot of folks cannot wait for this. Now, it is also worth noting that right now we do have Bitcoin futures ETFs coming up. Now, Bitcoin futures ETFs, this is very, very important, very different from a Bitcoin ETF. A Bitcoin ETF in theory, would actually hold Bitcoin. So that way it's like, hey, I'm investing in, let's say, BTCX. Let's say that's an ETF. Okay, I'm just making that symbol up. Then you put $100 in, that $100 should actually hold $100 of Bitcoin uh, somewhere. Now, you wouldn't have uh, that as access to, you wouldn't have a private key to this, right? So you wouldn't have this in your wallet. But in theory, you would put your trust in this ETF provider and they would hold your Bitcoin. A Bitcoin futures ETF is like a big step removed from this, okay? So in my opinion, stay away from the Bitcoin futures ETF. Why? Because the Bitcoin futures ETF, uh, like BITO, which should be trading today, that's ProShares, or Valkyries, which is BTFD, which is a, sort of a funny way of saying buy the F and dip, and that's actually their ticker symbol, which quite frankly is kind of brilliant. But anyway, the Valkyrie Bitcoin future ETF uh, is another one. That'll probably start trading later this week, along with multiple others. These futures ETFs, in my opinion, will rob you. Uh, in short, if you don't know what Contango is, in futures contracts, you should not be investing in a Bitcoin futures ETF. Stay away. Don't do it. Don't touch it. Stay away. Uh, that's because you're going to have huge drag with fees as they continue to buy Bitcoin futures at more expensive prices relative to where Bitcoin actually is or likely will be. And these are big issues. It's going to create a big drag for the fund. Bitcoin futures ETFs, in my opinion, are meant for trading, not for hodling. So if you want to hodl, buy Bitcoin. Just my opinion. Don't sue me, bro, okay? <laughs> All right, folks, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, please share it. I think there are a lot of crazy positive catalysts that we talked about in this video. And folks, remember to go to metkevin.com slash BF to get yourself up to $250 in free money from BlockFi. And folks, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.